Good evening, future Maryland home buyers. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Kelly Beard, content specialist for Maryland Realtors, and I want to welcome you all to your Home Buying Keys webinar. Assembled tonight, we have experts in the industry. With us is our very own Director of Advocacy and Public Policy, Lisa May, Frank Bimonde, and Catherine Kramer Dale from Maryland Housing and Community Development, James Halls from Freddie Mac, Pat Patricia Jackson, our EXP Realtor, and Donna Hubbard from Fitzgerald Finance Financial. Tonight, you will get an abundance of information to help you navigate and succeed in your home buying journey. This webinar will be recorded and sent out to all attendees after the conclusion of the webinar. We encourage your questions and we look forward to answering them. Please post all your questions in the Q&A box below and we will answer them as they come or at the end of this webinar. With that, I will turn it over to our Director of Advocacy and Public Policy, Lisa May. Take it away. Kelly, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who has joined us here this evening. As you may or may not know, October is Financial Planning Month. And if you are here tonight, then hopefully buying a home is in your long-term financial plan. And we think it's gonna be one that's really, really going to pay off for you. But of course, everybody has to take a little first step into something as big as buying a home. And that's why we have assembled this expert panel here tonight to help break down this process into little digestible bites, uh, take the fear out of it, and get you well on your way uh, to successful homeownership. Tonight, we're going to start with our Realtor member, Patricia Clark Jackson. Uh, as was mentioned, she is with EXP Realty in Fulton, Maryland, and she has years of experience helping first time buyers achieve their home ownership goals. So uh, Patricia, you have your presentation up and I'm gonna let you take it away. Thank you, Lisa May. And I wanna thank everyone for joining us. I'm gonna start off with, Hello, I'm Patricia Clark Jackson, and I'm here to share you eight available tips for home buyer buying that will greatly simplify your search for your perfect home. One, determine your debt ratio. It's easy as dividing your monthly debt by your monthly income to get the debt ratio. The lower the number, the better. This percentage will help you understand and manage your debt effectively. Therefore, knowing your numbers is important and it's gonna set you up for your next step. And also here on the slide, it tells you how to calculate your debt ratio. And here's an example, the debt, 1,500, uh, and your debt may include student loan, personal loan, credit cards, or car loans. And you're going to divide that by your monthly income. And then after that, you're going to time it by 100. And in this example, the debt ratio is 30%. That's 30% of your total income. And 30%, if you are near 30%, that is a good debt ratio all to get you started for uh, the next step. And our next step is number two, getting pre-approved for a mortgage is an important step in the home buying process. It allows you to have a clear understanding of your budget, which includes closing costs, down payment, and monthly mortgage payment, and ongoing expenses. Next, number three, plan for additional costs. In addition to the purchase price, consider other expenses such as property taxes, homeowner insurance, maintenance, and potential, potential renovations. It's essential to have a clear understanding of the overall financial commitment. Number four, work with a reliable real estate agent who will guide you through the home buying process, provide valuable insight, negotiate on your behalf, 
and help you find the right property. Number five, identify your priority. List your must-haves and nice-to-have in a home. Consider factors like location, size, number of bedroom, bathroom, one level, four level, or garage, amenity, and proximity to schools, work, and other essential service. Number six, research the market. Explore the real estate market in your desired location. Look for recent sale data, trends, and neighborhood information. Better to understand property value and the overall market condition. Sign up for the market alerts at patriciackjackson.com. Number seven, review the paperwork. Carefully review all the paperwork and legal documents relating to the purchase, such as sales contract, financing agreement, and property disclosure. And eight, if you don't remember anything, you must remember this, inspect the property. Once you find a potential home, hire a professional home inspector to assess its condition thoroughly. This will help you identify potential issues and hidden problems before deciding to purchase your new home. Most important, if any repairs need to be completed, go to the Maryland Department of Labor website and ensure that the company is certified and licensed to complete the task. This will help eliminate such negative impact after you have settled in your home. Remember, always hire a professional. And family, buying a home is a noteworthy investment. So take your time Follow these eight steps and seek professional guidance when needed. And happy house hunting. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Patricia, thank you. And yes, please, for our attendees uh, here this evening, um, if you have questions, please use uh, the Q&A. Um, because we can answer your questions live for you here this evening. Um, Patricia, you mentioned kind of briefly, you know, the importance of working, you know, with an agent that is representing you and your interests in the transaction. But there are a lot, a lot of realtors out there in the state of Maryland. So how would you advise a first-time buyer to go about choosing the right agent for them? Well, one thing we can go, you can go to Maryland Realtors and we have uh, agents who are certified with the uh, MMP program. That's one way. And as I say, <clears throat> Um, you want to find an agent that uh, is going to work for you, walk you through the process, and give you an insight of everything that's involved. Wonderful. Thank you. And you also mentioned home inspections and, and how important those are. And in recent years, you know, there's sort of been this, this narrative out there that, oh, you need to waive a home inspection in order to get your offer accepted. What has been the experience of your clients in asking for home inspections? And what's the, what's the danger of not asking for one? Lisa, it is very important to get a home inspector inspection and depending on the market sometimes it could be a seller's market and you know and uh they you know it's just hard to get a contract through but i would tell all uh home buyers to take your time and get a home inspection because everything might look good 
but behind those walls and under those floors and on in top of that ceiling, you will never know what's going on if you don't get a home inspection, a professional home inspection to uh, tell you what's going on because it can be costly. And before you get in the contract, you want to know what it's going to cost for me to maintain the property that I'm going to purchase. Right. And then, you know, on that checklist, you mentioned of, of coming up with a list of your wants in in your home and, and what matters to you. Now, do you think that it's common for particularly a first time buyer to get everything on that wish list? Or do you folks have to kind of pick and choose or, or maybe just pick a couple of the things that are important to them? Well, Lisa, the goal is to get everything that a home buyer may want. But depending on location and purchase price, they may not. So that's why it's important for them to know what they want to have and what they would like to have so they can weigh it out depending on what they are looking for. Wonderful. Well, guys, Patricia has been so kind to answer some questions. If you think of more, keep putting those in the Q&A and uh, we'll continue to answer those throughout. We can always circle back um, at the end. But Patricia, thank you so, so much um, for sharing this information with us. We really appreciate you being here tonight. And please remember uh, Patricia's contact information that's on here. And we will, of course, send her, her slides uh, and, and information out to everyone along with the recording of this at the end. Uh, next we are, oh, go ahead. Thank you for having me. Of course. Next, we're going to turn to Donna Hubbard. Donna is with uh, is a senior loan officer with Fitzgerald Financial Group, uh, based in Rockville, but of course can lend um, to a much wider uh, radius of clients. Uh, I will not say uh, how long she has been in the industry, but needless oh. to say, she <laughs> is a very, very experienced loan officer, uh, has probably seen it all when it comes to mortgage loans, interest rates, different markets. So Donna, what do we need to know tonight about where the mortgage market is for buyers today? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that and, and the process and where the, um, I'm trying to get my screen up here. Let me see, I can get that up. Okay, can you see that everybody? Not quite yet, but let's give it a second. Okay, let's see. Oh boy, let's see, go back to slides here. I me, I think I need to share my screen. I apologize. Okay. And well, we had it earlier. Let's see. We did. You know, we practiced these things and yes. they work perfectly then, right? I'm on screen too. And, oh my goodness, let's see. Oh, here we go. Let me do this. Okay. There we are. There we are. Are we here? Okay. And I need to back them up a little bit. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. I think it's still, here we go. Um. Yeah, the market today, well, it's a little little bit slower than it was a few years ago, but we're um, getting creative in the mortgage world. We're trying to get the, the uh, products and uh, the programs that, were, that are needed to get buyers in. And I would say for first-time buyers, we have a, quite a few of those programs. And uh, right now, I think they're seeing more activity in the market 
as far as um, being able to afford to buy because of all the assistance, the programs, special things we have for first time buyers. Um, so I'd like to kind of run through my slides here. Um, Patricia did a great job of doing some of the home buying uh, steps that are involved at the beginning. And thank you for not telling everybody uh, about how many decades I've been in this business. <laughs> it's been a long time. So I did see interest rates in the double digits when I got in the industry and um, we're, we're still here. So we, we can get through these, these times. Um, first off, uh, we've got a game here really um, to look at. This is what we call Loanopoly. And uh, it's, it's kind of like your game plan. This is a good uh, little flyer here to kind of walk you through the process. I think everybody right now is probably in that go box. And, uh, you know, like a game, uh, there are rules and directions and other players involved in getting uh, to the finish line. And this kind of walks through a lot of those steps. Uh, well, all the steps really involved in uh, achieving your goal of home ownership. And um, we we like to start with the pre-approval and that already has been discussed a little bit. So that's your first step. You wanna to talk to a lender and get yourself pre-approved. And then you're working with your realtor to help you find a home. Ultimately, you'll get your contract ratified and uh, you're on your way. Uh, then the loan process really kicks in and we get loans uh, through the processing um, system of underwriting for approval. Uh, there's an inspection. If you've done your home inspection, that usually comes right after the contract and processing of the loan will continue. Appraisal will be done. Uh, and then we're going to reach the uh, loan approval stage, get any loan conditions, prepare for closing. And I'm just kind of walking through this um, game here. And then uh, final walkthrough where you go through the house right before settlement, make sure it's still in the shape it was in when you first laid eyes on it and wrote a contract. And then settlement will get you your, your keys. Um, I like to bring your attention to the middle of this uh, game board, the, the, uh, the don'ts. And these are very important, uh, definitely. If anything of these things come up while you're in process for a loan, I would discuss with your loan officer right away because some of these could create a situation where you're no longer qualified for the, the mortgage and the house you're trying to get. And things, uh, major things like changing jobs, buying a car, uh, taking a big trip, charging up those credit cards, and these things can affect your qualifying. Um, so do uh, check with your loan officer if any of those things are uh, in the horizon for you while you're in the loan process. And getting organized for this process, it's very important. I would get your little folder set up, home purchase, and keep all your paperwork in there. Uh, what we're going to do is first need to get your documents together. And typically this is a list of the standard documents to get a mortgage and a pre-approval too. We, we kind of get all this stuff up front to get you your pre-approval. And it includes income documentation. So we're looking at pay stubs, W-2s, two years tax returns, sometimes three. Uh, there are programs that require three years of tax returns. Uh, we're gonna verify assets, landlord information so we can verify rental history. Um, U.S. citizens uh, obviously can get a loan and so can non-U.S. citizens, permanent residents and non-permanent residents uh, can get mortgages and uh, they would have to provide some documentation and a photo ID. Loan programs. This is a list of programs. that are, These are all available in Maryland. It's not a, a complete list, um, but primarily what you're seeing here is when you're meeting with your lender, you're gonna to try to figure out what's your best product and, and program and what works best for you. What do you qualify for? You may have several choices and with the help of your lender, you'll figure out what is the best program for you. The first three, conventional VA, FHA, these are, these are the standard ones that are out there um, and they're pretty popular. The conventional loan allows you to put as little as 3% down 
And that's a popular program, probably the one that's mostly used. And uh, if you're putting down, let's say more than five or 10%, you might also be looking at a conventional loan. The VA loan is that's exclusively for military veterans, active duty military and reservists. And that allows for 100% financing. So that's a great program. FHA is very uh, common program. It, it's only three and a half percent down payment. And it's a pretty, it's a little more flexible with credit scores on the lower end. So that's, that's a good program too. The interest rate typically is a little bit lower than a conventional loan. Um, USDA, that's uh, more for the rural areas and the property has to meet USDA requirements, but it does allow for no money down. Um, mortgage credit certificate, that is a tax credit that's offered through the Maryland Mortgage Program. I don't believe it's available right now, but um, maybe Catherine can talk to that uh, a little bit later. And then we've got Jumpstart, that's an FHA loan program with 100% financing, get a first and second. Uh, Freddie Mac Borrower Smart Program, uh, we have a Freddie Mac representative on the call tonight. He may be able to talk more about that. And that's uh, $1,500 in down payment and closing assistance up to $1,500. And then the Maryland Mortgage Program, by far the most popular first-time home buyer program and uh, repeat buyers can use it as well in, in the state of Maryland. And we, we uh, participate with that program quite a bit. It's a great program and they offer many options and you'll hear more about that later in the call. And then FHLB, this is a federal home loan bank program. This is a, a grant for down payment and closing assistance up to 15,000. The only downside with this one, it doesn't come out enough and it's limited funding. So it typically comes out in March. Uh, we have about a million dollars of funds for this and it kind of goes quickly, unfortunately, but if you can catch that one, that's good. And that one can also be piggybacked behind the Maryland Mortgage Program, which, which would increase the amount of funds. Um, I will just also say that there are many cities in the state of Maryland and in, in the counties that offer first-time home buyer programs. I do work with um, quite a bit of those programs uh, just for instance, the city of Gaithersburg, Frederick City, um, the, um, where else we got, Rockville City, Montgomery County, Anne Arundel, PG, they all have their own programs. So it would help um, when you're talking with the loan officer and, and where you're gonna live, find out what's available there because there is a, a number of programs that can help first time buyers uh, bridge that gap of savings that they may not have. And then the uh, approval process. We're gonna, these are the components that we look at when we do the approval. Um, and I'll qu quickly go through these. We're gonna look at income, assets, credit, debts, the appraisal on the property. And then there's some costs, of course, associated with buying a home. And for income, this is, a, this is income that we can consider full-time, part-time, uh, self-employed. A lot of the type of income listed here, you have to have a two-year history so we can use it. So a self-employed individual, we have to have been doing that business or in the self-employed position for at least two years, and we can consider that income. Uh, seasonal employment, that would include maybe the teacher that works in Ocean City in the summer. And uh, we can, with the history of that, we can use that income as well. Bonus, commission overtime, second job, as long as there's a two-year history of receiving that income, uh, we're good with that. And then, uh, of course, there's other income from Social Security, disability, retirement account, uh, retirement benefits, interest, dividends, alimony, and child support. So that's uh, an inclusive list of pretty much all the income we can consider. Um, moving on to assets, here's a list of places where you could pull money from in order to purchase a home and grants being the down payment assistance programs that uh, we've been talking about. There's, uh, again, there's quite a few of those available. Gifts from family are acceptable sources of funds as well. 
credit worthiness. The lender will review the credit and we're gonna look at of course, uh, the credit early on in the process, because we want to make sure if there's any issues that we get to them right away and we can help you um, sometimes improve your credit scores by doing some analyzers on credit and uh, putting you on a path. If you need to get your scores up, there are ways we can help you with that. And these are the things that will typically show up uh, on a credit report. And as I mentioned, the pre-approval process will involve the credit report. And that way we can have time to review that. And if the scores aren't where they need to be, or there's some things that need to be corrected, we can get that addressed early on. Minimum score to get a mortgage these days is 620. However, some of the home buyer assistance programs do require higher scores, um, some 640, some 660. And when we look at your credit, we'll make sure everything looks good and there's no uh, mistakes because sometimes there can be uh, erroneous information on the credit. And for the file, we have to determine a credit score for the file. So what we'll do is pull three repositories. So we pull a full credit report. And with the three repositories, we're going to take the median score. So that's dropping the high, dropping the low, and the middle score is the one for the file. If there are two borrowers, we will take the lower of those two median scores. And so that would be the guideline score for the file and the programs that could be um, utilized with that particular score. And this is just a little uh, breakdown of how scores are we get this uh, calculated. I get questions all the time. Um, and you may have heard that if you get a consumer credit report, meaning you pull a credit from Credit Karma, annualcreditreport.com, Equifax, some of those services, those are considered consumer reports. And the scoring models are different than what we have with the mortgage report. And typically, a mortgage credit report scoring will be 20 to 30 points lower. So we get this question a lot. Oh, I pulled my credit last week. It was 750. And I'm pulling it today at 725. And uh, that, that is why. So it's, it's a little bit different scoring model. And then this little pie graph kind of gives you an idea what is the most important in determining your credit score. And of course, paying on time is the most important thing. And another thing that can greatly affect your score is uh, if you are maxed out on credit cards. So you kind of want to keep your balances low if you're trying to improve your score. I will also look at your debts. We look at the debts off the credit report typically. And if you have anything else that we might need to know about, you would disclose that such as uh, child support debt or any garnishments um, or any IRS obligations, we would need to know about those. Okay, and with the property, uh, once you're under contract, we're gonna appraise that property and the value uh, that the appraiser provides usually is very close, if not for the sales price, but if the property does not appraise, for the sales price, and we kind of have to maybe rework some numbers, um, maybe talk to the seller a little bit, and we'll see what we come up with. But that could affect uh, the terms of the loan a little bit if the value is less than the purchase price. And when you're um, getting your loan estimate, this is done at the beginning of the process once you're under contract. We will disclose to you all the numbers so you will know what your payment is, what your cost breakdown is, your interest rate would be uh, on this loan estimate, whether you lock the interest rate, which you can do once you have a contract, or whether you're not, you choose chosen not to lock at that time. And then we'll disclose whatever the current rate is and you'll get a, a nice estimate that will show you the payment breakdown um, if you have any down payment assistance funds, we're looking at a particular program, we'll reflect all of that for you as well. Okay. 
So now we're ready to submit for approval. And we're going to put all these things together that we've collected from you. The, the documents have all been verified. We've verified employment. We're going to calculate the debt to income ratios, make sure they meet the guidelines. And of course, we have done a lot of this up front anyway, but we'll do a final look-see through all of this. Credit scores, um, are they acceptable? And the loan rate program have been finalized, appraisal was in, and the file would be submitted for approval. And then we would be uh, hopefully getting that loan approval. And that's pretty much uh, my presentation for this mortgage process. And that is me and my contact info. So thank you. Donna, thank you. And if anyone has a question for Donna, please remember, go ahead and put that in our Q&A. We can take your question live here tonight. Um, Donna, one thing that I hear a whole lot out there is, oh, interest rates are so much higher today than they were. Maybe I need to wait until interest rates come back down or wait until housing prices come back down. What's your response to that sort of that line of thinking that's out there? Yes. I, my response is I always think it's a good time to buy, really. It, it you know, it really depends on, on your situation, but if, if you can make it work and it's affordable for you, um, you know, what we are telling folks today, because the interest rates are on the higher end, but if they feel they, you know, are comfortable with qualifying and the payment that, you know, you, you marry the house, but you date the rate. So you've probably heard that before, but it's it's true. So rates will cycle back down. Will it be next year? Uh, right now, they predict that towards the end of next year, we'll see lower rates. Um, nobody knows for sure. They, they readjust those um, projections all the time. But I think you're not going to be stuck with this mortgage for 30 years. So if the payment... Um, you feel like, oh, it's, you know, it's a little much, but this is really the house I want and it meets all my needs. Um, I'm, I'm going to do it. And of course, you don't want to get in over your head, but then you're going to also be keeping an eye on the rates down the road and, and look for an opportunity to get a lower rate and, and get that payment down. So I would always, you know, think about that as a possible. Wonderful. Wonderful. Donna, we had a question come in from Cheryl um, asking for some clarity on the underwriting process and mm -hmm. what happens if you get to underwriting and all of a sudden your, your loan can't be approved? Um, what are some things that buyers should know or, to, or steps that they should take if that occurs? Well, normally we're going to review uh, myself, my processing team, a lot of inf that information will be all reviewed ahead of time, then it's submitted to the underwriter. So it, it isn't too often that we get to that, po that point thinking we have a problem. Um, so once we get everything to the underwriter, I know underwriters want to make, make the deal work. So they could come back and say, oh, you know, this... We're, we really can't use this particular job. Maybe they haven't been on it long enough. And, or if I had a question about that, I would certainly address it up front with an underwriter. But they may come back and say, you know, here's what we need to maybe make, do to make this work. So before we would ever deny a loan, we are going to look at all other possible options. And sometimes it could mean, hey, Mr. Buyer, can you, can you come up with a little bit more money? Um, that will help, or can you pay off this particular debt? Or maybe your loan officer can help you with this credit item. So um, we're, we're going to work through that. And, and we do not like to deny loans. No lender does. So we will try everything we can to um, correct that situation. Right. And then we had a question um, come in about the uh, the NACA program, N-A-C-A. Um, uh -huh. Are you familiar with that? Can you talk about that a little bit? I am not that familiar. In fact, I'm on a webinar tomorrow 
uh, afternoon about that program. So they, they, I know they're going through some changes right now and we're gonna get up to speed on that tomorrow. Um, but uh, we do participate with that program. Other loan officers in my uh, company do. I personally have not worked with that in many years, but did in the past. But I could certainly, if that person wanted more information, if I could get contact information or they could reach out to me tomorrow, I will have a lot more information about that program. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and then a question as we make our transition here to our next presenter about grants that are available. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, some through loan programs, um, some through the localities, um, as Donna mentioned. Um, what I would suggest for that is go to our uh, consumer website, MarylandHomeOwnership.com. And we have a listing there. You can search for your county um, and see what is available uh, specific to where you want to live. Um, but then also we have our statewide programs uh, that are there as well. So MarylandHomeOwnership.com. Donna, thank you. Um, that was so informative. We really appreciate you being here um, this evening. And if you guys think of any other questions for Donna, keep putting them in the Q&A and we can circle back at the end. Um, thank you. Of course, of course. And now I'm going to hand this over. You know, we started talking about credit scores and the importance of those. Uh, I want to hand this over now to uh, Jim Hall, who is our representative from Freddie Mac. And if you're worried about your credit score or want to learn more about, um, you know, why your score is the way it is and how to improve it, Freddie Mac has a wonderful tool called Credit Smart uh, that Jim is going to tell us a little bit about tonight. So, Jim, floor is yours. Yeah, well, thank you, Lisa, and thanks again for the invitation to speak to the consumers in Maryland. It's really a privilege, and um, the, they're receiving great information tonight. Um, you know, every webinar that you have, I just sit back in awe of the uh, subject matter experts that you're able to assemble for these uh, these events. And Patricia and Donna have really um, shared a lot of great information for our, our audience tonight. And I, I hope they're all, you know, let, letting it sink in. And uh, hopefully after this webinar, when they go out to purchase the home, that they're going to contact Patricia and Donna and let them be their their trusted advisors through this process. So, um, so hello everyone again, Jim Hall, Freddie Mac. And um, if you're wondering what Freddie Mac is, I can assure you Freddie Mac's not a person. Okay, we are a government sponsored enterprise. Um, we were created and chartered by Congress in 1970. And our mission is to bring stability, um, liquidity, and, and accountability to the marketplaces. And um, we're a mortgage company, but we don't make loans to the public. So um, you may be asking, why do we have two mortgage companies on, you know, on the agenda tonight? So I'm not in competition with Donna or, or her organization. Um, by providing liquidity into the marketplace, we're a second in the secondary mortgage market. So what we do is we buy mortgages from Donna's company and from the Maryland DHCD through the Maryland Mortgage Program. And by buying those mortgages, we provide the cash liquidity for organizations to continue to offer great mortgage programs um, like these two organizations are to you. So we have a lot of um, business pillars. Um, you know, like Lisa mentioned, one of our main business pillars is education. And it's really, really important to um, not only raise awareness and educate our housing professional and, and mortgage professional partners, but to educate consumers like yourselves. And what we have is a, um, a program called Credit Smart. And I'm going to share my screen now, and hopefully I won't run into technical problems like we've been having earlier. So let me uh, let me pull it up here. And and Lisa, if you can tell me if you can see it. You, perfection, perfection. Okay, all right, thankfully, okay. So Credit Smart has actually been around for 20 years and it's a, a financial education resource that we provide to consumers. And I have to say it, it's a tool that um, 
you know, really isn't utilized enough. And, you know, we take it out there to our lending partners and to our realtor partners to present um, to consumers like yourselves. And it and don't let the, you know, term course scare you. Um, this is something that you can utilize throughout your whole home ownership journey. Um, th think about it as like, remember back in the, you know, the old days we would have books on our shelves, Encyclopedia Britannica. Okay. This is like the Encyclopedia Britannica of, of the home buying process and the mortgage application process. It, it's something that, um, you know, you'll be able to utilize um, throughout all the years of being a homeowner and it doesn't cost you anything. It, it's a free resource and tool that Freddie Mac um, provides to you. So, you know, as a major takeaway from this webinar tonight, you'll get this information and Lisa and Marilyn Realtors will send you these slides and the web address is in the bottom right-hand corner of this slide. So you can check it out for yourselves. Um, it's very interactive. Um, it, it's got a lot of videos, quizzes. Um, you don't have to do it all in one setting. Um, you know, you can pause it and, and go back to it. It, it, and it's um, also multilingual. We broke it into two sections, the essential side and the home buyer use side. Now, the, the essential side, um, again, it's multiple modules, and, and that's something that will, you know, prepare you for the whole journey. The home buyer use side is the immediate side. That will take you through the immediacy of the, um, you know, purchasing the home, working with a, a trusted financial advisor, being your realtor, and also another, the other trusted advisor that you have, your mortgage loan officer. So it's really important to realize that the realtor and the loan officer work for you, okay? They, you know, they are there to identify, you know, what you want and what you need. And I really can't uh, impress that uh, upon you, um, uh, enough. Now, um, you know, from a personal standpoint, uh, my son and his wife, they bought a house two years ago and they um, they took the Credit Smart course. They thought it was really, really beneficial to them. Um, they had a, working with a great realtor and they were working also with a great loan originator and they were able to buy a house. I live up here in, in South Jersey and they bought a home in Cherry Hill, which is right outside of Philadelphia. Um, but this market is challenging right now. And if and if your trusted advisors aren't really telling you that, um, then you may want to look for, you know, another realtor and another loan um, officer because it, there's a, you know, lack of inventory out there with homes. So you have to be patient in this economic environment. And again, like I said, if you have the right people working for you, um, it, it won't be painful. So the... What we did, we set it up. Uh, we enhanced Credit Smart a couple years ago to make it really, really, uh, you know, savvy for you know younger millennials and, and Gen Zers who are coming into the market. Um, you know, they were the generation that really grew up with technology. Um, you know, I have two millennial children, and I remember they had the Game Boys in their hands, and you know, all of the you know the video games. So we wanted to make it very accessible to the generation who. Under, understands technology. You know, I'm at the tail end of the baby boomer. So when I was buying a house, I, you know, we would get the Sunday Philadelphia Inquirer, go to the real estate section, look up the realtors and the houses they have for sale and look at the mortgage companies and the rates they publish in a newspaper. It's not done that way anymore. You know, it's, it's um, you know, it's done by through social media and, uh, and technology. So, you know, Credit Smart is up to date with the technology. So what you can do is, you know, you can set your own dashboard. You can track your progress, set your goals, have a notebook and, you know, earn badges on, you know, when you, you reach certain distinctions throughout the process. So again, um, you know, take a look at it after this webinar, you know, see if it's worth your while and then utilize it through the process. So the essential part has modules with, you know, that hit upon these topics here. So it will help you to set goals. Um, it talks about earning and then spending. 
being a savvy borrower, planning to save and prepare and protect. Now, the last two are, are so important. Um, you know, saving is really, really, you know, essential when you become a home homeowner. It's not all about putting the key in the door, walking in and saying, okay, I'm a homeowner and I plus I got, um, you know, approved for a mortgage. There's so much more. I mean, you have to furnish the house. You have to put drapes up, curtains, blinds. Um, you, you have to get everything to maintain the outside, whether it's lawnmowers, snow blowers, and so forth. And then I'll never forget my, my father, you know, 33 years ago when I bought my first house, he was like, Jim, you need a rainy day fund. And I'm like, well, dad, what's, what's a rainy day fund? He said, well, you're going to be a homeowner. Things are going to happen. And you need that, you know, bit of cash there that can get, get you through an emergency. And like two years into it, my water heater went and flooded my basement and I had a mess on my hands. But I listened to dad. I had a little rainy day fund. I had cash. So immediately I could, you know, you know, take care of things before, you know, I put my insurance claim in. So really, really important uh, information here. Um, Credit Smart will really teach you how to, you know, budget and go through the saving pro um, process. And also prepare and protect. Um, you know, one of our community missions is to prevent foreclosures. I mean, it's great to be a homeowner, but things can happen through life and things can trip us up to where, you know, we get behind on certain payments. So, you know, this is a major financial decision, probably the biggest financial decision you're going to make in your lives. And we want you to protect that asset that you're investing in. And Credit Smart will help you do that. So I mentioned home buyer you, that's about the immediate process. Um, this is about what you're going to go through, um, you know, working with a realtor like Patricia and working with a, a mortgage loan originator, okay, like Donna. So this is really going to, you know, help you through um, the immediate process. It's six modules. It doesn't take that long. Um, and once you get through it, you have to pass a quiz of it, and you have to achieve 80% or higher. And once you do that, you receive, uh, you know, a home buyer completion certificate which meets national standards and is nationally recognized and it's good for a year. So once you have that certificate, you know, you know, a realtor and a loan originator are going to know that you're serious about buying a home. And it's also um, available in Spanish. So, you know, if there's, there's a language issue, um, you know, it, it, does, it doesn't have to be done in English. It can be done in Spanish also. Okay, so so with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Lisa. And let me stop sharing my screen here. And like I said, uh, Lisa's going to be sharing these slides with you. Um, you'll be able to, you know, access this. If if you don't want to wait for the slides, you can go and Google Freddie Mac Credit Smart. It will come up. But again, um, it's it's free and it's a great tool. So please take advantage of it. Jim, thank you so much. And like he mentioned, you know, the, the resources that Freddie Mac has are free to you, but because so many of those down payment programs require you to do a certified um, and approved homebuyer education class, if you take it, it can actually put some money in your pocket um, for your home purchase. So we absolutely encourage you to go to Freddie Mac, to Credit Smart, and to Homebuyer U. It's only going to help. Yep, so, Jim, absolutely. thank you. Thank you for oh, yeah. joining us um, from Jersey uh, here <laughs> this evening. We appreciate it so, so much. Oh, you're welcome. And um, my um, business partner, Catherine, is going to talk about our HFA Advantage program, which is a 3% down program with reduced mortgage insurance. And I didn't want to dive into that because I know we're getting pressed on time. And I'll leave that up to Catherine. So, thank you again, Lisa. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. And at, at, we've already gone into our little transition. Um, Catherine Kramer Dale is here from Maryland DHCD. And if you want to know about loan programs that are only available to Maryland residents, a lot of which also include um, assistance to get you into that home. Um, Catherine is your person and she's going to take us through some of these wonderful and innovative loan products that you can take advantage of. So Catherine, you're up.
Okay. Well, first of all, I want to congratulate all of you that are on this call because you've made the first step in committing to purchasing a home. And knowledge is power. And the more you ask questions, the more knowledge you'll have. And throughout this whole presentation, I've heard each person say how important it is for you to feel comfortable with each partner that you're working with, whether it be the agent, the lender, you know, different programs that you can get from Freddie Mac or the state of Maryland through the Maryland Mortgage Program. This is the largest purchase you'll ever make. So ask as many questions as you want. Sometimes I refer to myself as a five-year-old. I not only want to know what I'm asking, but why am I asking? You want to be able to understand all of the facets and feel as though you can trust the subject matter experts so they're directing you in the right path. I work for the State of Maryland Department of Housing with the Maryland Mortgage Program. The Maryland Mortgage Program are programs that will help you as someone who wants to purchase a home in Maryland. When you are interested in using our program, you don't actually apply directly with us. You would apply with our guest speaker, Donna Hubbard with Fitzgerald Financial. They're one of our top performing lenders. But you could also make sure maybe who you're working with at a bank or, or whoever, you could reach out to them. Or you can always click on here. So our website is www.mmp.marylandmarylandland.gov. And you could reach out to Donna. They've been one of our top performing lenders for many years. I've been here for 15 years. And or you can come down here and click on talk to a lender. You apply with one of our approved lenders. And like Donna mentioned, they're going to do all of the collecting of paperwork, making sure that your credit qualifies, making sure that your assets, your income, your, your job, everything. Anything you think of doing when you're getting ready to purchase a home, pick up and call the loan officer. Like Donna said, don't buy a car. Don't apply for new credit cards, even if you get an automatic approval. Don't buy furniture. Don't do anything without talking to your loan officer. When you think that you would be interested in using the Maryland Mortgage Program, you're going to let your loan officer know, hey, I'd like to use the Maryland Mortgage Program. I'd like to see if I qualify because I've heard they offer several programs that will provide down payment and closing cost. So you still have to qualify with the lender to make sure you're meeting FHA, VA, USDA, or conventional guidelines. Because as Jim said, then they're purchasing these loans on the back end. But we have six eligibility guidelines. And I'm really briefly going to go over them with you, just so you know that it's not hard. When you're on our website, the six questions that the loan officer will ask you to determine if you qualify for the Maryland Mortgage Program is, are you a first-time home buyer? Are you somebody who's never owned a home or maybe haven't owned a home in the last three years? Or are you a veteran that's using your VA entitlement or exemption with us for the very first time? Or we have this fancy thing on our website called the Mapper and your loan officer will type in your property address. And if your property address shows up on this Mapper, that says it's in a targeted area, then you are considered a first time home buyer if you meet any of those criteria. The second guideline is we wanna make sure that you're not exceeding our household income limits. The lender is going to use the income that they need to use to qualify you to be able to purchase your home, but they're also gonna ask you who's going to be on the loan, but also living in the home. So if you have an adult that's 19, any, anyone 18 years or older, so if you're uh, caring for your elderly family member, we're going to ask for grandma's social security or SSI, along with your pay stubs and income for mom and dad. If you have an adult child that's 18 years or older, if they're a full-time student and you can verify that they are full-time, I believe that's 13 credits or more, then we don't have to use their income. But if they're not a full-time student and Johnny's 20 and he works at Home Depot, we're going to ask for Johnny's income verification too. 
and the lender will make sure that you don't exceed our household income. Believe me, our household income limits are six figures and higher. So I don't think you'll have a problem. The third eligibility guideline is, hey, if you have a lot of money, why are you coming to the state to borrow money? So the third guideline is that you cannot have more than 20% of the sales price of liquid assets. So liquid is checking, savings, CD, stocks, bonds, even a gift or a gift of equity or proceeds from the sale of a home, whatever. The fourth guideline is home buyer education. We were just talking about that. The borrowers have to complete a home buyer education course. On our website, I'll show you in a second, we have a list of where you can select all the home buyer education classes. The sixth guideline is our DTI. You heard Patricia talk about that earlier. She showed you how you can actually calculate your own DTI. Our debt to income ratio, you cannot exceed 45. And the credit score is 640. Donna mentioned that we are a little bit higher. So your credit score has to be at 640 or higher and your debt to income cannot exceed 45. Now we do offer on FHA, VA, and USDA to allow you to go up to a 50% with your credit score at 680 or higher. And on conventional products, we'll allow you to go to a 50% and your credit score can still be at 640. So once the lender determines that you qualify, then they're gonna come to where it says interest rates right on our page. And you're gonna open up the page and you're gonna see all of the programs that we offer to help you with down payment and closing costs. If you're not a first time home buyer, then here's the Flex product. You don't have to be a first time home buyer, but you have to also make sure you don't exceed the household income, assets, home buyer education, DTI, and credit score. If you are a first time home buyer, we have a product called the First Time Advantage Direct. And this is the lowest rate that we have on our rate sheet. And yes, rates are starting to grow, go up, but word on the street is we've got the money and our rates are actually very competitive. So if you're a borrower and you qualify for the Maryland Mortgage Program, but you don't need any money from us because like Donna mentioned, you could have gotten money from, I don't know, FHLB, or you could have gotten money from a city or county program. And you said, you know what? I got enough money from all the other programs out there. I want the lowest rate on the rate sheet with the Maryland Mortgage Program, and I don't need any money from the state. So here's the first time advantage direct. And like Donna said, make sure that your loan officer is well-versed in the city or county where you're purchasing so that they have connections and know about where there's additional funds that you can use. If you do need down payment assistance and closing costs, you can still use city and county money and stack it with us. You could get $6,000 with us. And these are the rates. Government is FHA via USDA. And these are our conventional. You could get 3% down payment and closing cost assistance. Now we're a fixed 30 and we're at an up to a 97% LTV. So my word, 97, 98, 99, 100, you're already at 100% financing. We offer a 4% down payment and closing cost assistance. We offer a 5%. This 5% product right here is winner, winner, chicken dinner. I'm telling you that we get loans in every day, 24, 33 loans coming in the door every day and borrowers are wanting this 5%. We have the home start, which is then a 40 people, 6% down payment, but the lender will verify if you qualify because it's for individuals where their income is not exceeding 50% AMI, which is area medium income. It's more for, um, I don't wanna say low to moderate because I would probably qualify. Um, now, we also have special programs in Montgomery County. We have a Montgomery County program where if you work for a particular Montgomery County agency, you will get $25,000 worth of down payment and closing cost assistance. Now, these are the rates for your first mortgage. And any of this down payment that I've talked about with you, it is recorded as a second lien. There's no interest. There's no monthly payment. 
but you do have to pay it back when you sell or refi. Then we have a standard Montgomery County program where, again, you don't have to work for any particular Montgomery County agency, and you'll get 40% of your household income up to a maximum of $25,000. If you're buying in the city of Greenbelt in Prince George's County and you meet our guidelines, they're going to give you $15,000 worth of a grant. That's free, F-R-E-E -E money. When you sell a refi, you don't have to pay that back. But you have to be purchasing in the city of Greenbelt, zip code 20770, and you have to be wanting showing proof that you've been renting for the last 12 consecutive months in the city of Greenbelt. One more program that I need to talk about is the Smart Buy. This is actually amazing. We will help you purchase a home in the state of Maryland through our Maryland Smart Buy. This is only a conventional, Fannie or Freddie. And we will also provide you down payment assistance if you want it. If you don't want any down payment assistance, you don't have to take it. But for the same exact rate, you could get $6,000 of down payment assistance. Or for the same exact rate, if your area medium income is below 50%, you could get 6%. And with the Maryland Smart Buy, we will help you pay off your student loan debt. This program has changed its numbers so many times. Right now, it is currently 15% of the purchase price up to a maximum of $20,000, whichever's less. So if you have student loan debt and 15% of the purchase price is up to $20,000, we will pay off your student loan debt. We will put it in the form of an unsecured promissory note if you were to pull your credit a few months later, you don't have any student loan debt. It's now an unsecured promissory note with the state of Maryland through the Maryland Mortgage Program. If you stay in this Maryland Smart Buy product for five years, this is the only product that has a guideline on it for time, then we will poof, forgiven, goes away. If you do decide to sell or refinance, you would pay back the first, you would pay back the second, and you'd have to pay back that student loan 20% each year over the five years. One thing that's very important that I want to bring up is the State of Maryland Department of Housing is a housing finance agency. And Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have said, if you are doing a loan with the Maryland Mortgage Program, and it's any loan on my rate sheet, but it's a conventional loan, the lender will look to see if the borrower's qualifying income comes in at 80% area medium income or below. And if it does, then your lender will go back in and click on a button that says HFA. And you will see that your mortgage insurance will drop from the standard findings down to 18%. It could go 18, 16, 12, or 6 that is a huge savings. And if you have any of this money down here and you've got money left over, your lender could even say, hmm, let's take some of this extra money and do a single premium and pay out your mortgage insurance. You may not necessarily understand what that means, but it's going to lower your monthly payment. And you also, in some instances, could walk away, even though this is not a cash out, you could walk away with POC, which means like your earnest money, your appraisal, any things that you've purchased up front. So with all that said, I could go on and on, but it is 735 and I certainly want to respect everyone's time. Please always feel free to reach out to the Maryland Mortgage Program if you have questions. This website is a free website. Anybody can get on it. We go out and we train the lenders all day and every day to make sure they're comfortable with all the different programs that we offer to help you as clients interested in purchasing in Maryland. And we want to make sure you're taking your home buyer education. We have a strong partnership with Maryland Realtors. So we want to make sure that the real estate agents are comfortable with our programs as well. So we do training with them. Come to the state of Maryland and use the Maryland Mortgage Program to help you purchase your home, achieve the American dream, and like Donna said, marry the house, date the rate.
If you've been in this industry for years, it's like a roller coaster. It's a ride and it's going to go up and down and up and down. And guess what? With any of these products, when the rates go down, you can refinance out of us and you still got the money to help you get into a house. Lisa, I want to thank you as always for your strong partnership with us. And again, for the agent and for Fitzgerald Financial, Donna Hubbard, much love to you and, and Danny and, and Jim and also my co-partner in crime, Frank Bamodi. Thank you. Catherine, thank you. And we did have, if, if you have a few seconds just to stick around, we did have a couple questions come in, um, possibly for you, maybe also for Donna, um, because it, it gets into some loan qualifications. Um, so the first question comes in, does, uh, if you're a first time buyer, is your retirement account, is that considered um, for income um, yeah. or for your overall asset level? Like how does your, your retirement income come into play? Yeah, so for when I say you can have more than 20% of a sales price, we only look at liquid assets. We don't count your 401 or retirement. So you could have a heck of a lot of money in there. We're only concerned about checking, saving CD stocks, bonds, a gift, as Donna right. mentioned, you get a gift from a family member. Um, if you are required to sell a home because you can't be on a deed, you can't own a home anywhere when you're purchasing this loan because it has to be your primary residence. Um, but no, we don't count your 401 or retirement. Got you. Now, this one's a little inside baseball, but we're going to we're going to give it a go. If you're the trustee of a trust, oh, do Lord. those assets count? Donna, where's Danny? <laughs> yeah, I, I would say no on that for the purpose yeah. of Maryland Mortgage Program. Yeah. Would you? Uh. No, I, I mean, if you're the, so if you're the trustee. And the funds are in a trust. Correct. They're not your individual funds. You might. So, yeah, I would think not. Not be concerned. Generally, trusts are set up until an individual is a certain age. Or I guess we'd have to look to see what the trust agreement was, if there was any contingencies, because if it's not something that you can liquidate, then no. And it's not really your money, I guess, even though you may have access to it, it's you're kind of like the executor of that trust fund. So I would think no. Not Very probably. interesting question. We almost Good stopped question. our panelists on that one. Good job. <laughs> Excellent question. Um now, can could a senior could seniors carry the loan to, in order to qualify their adult child for no. the program? If you're on the loan, you have to live in the home. We don't allow co-signers. <clears throat> yeah. So if the senior <clears throat> wants to live with their young children that they're helping them buy a house, more power to them. Yep. But you gotta if you're on the loan, you have to live in the home. Okay. No co-signers. Great. And, and be first time buyers, right? If you want to qualify for those first time buyer specific programs. Yes. Yes. But one thing I'll say too, again, like Donna mentioned, you know, you're going to work with the lender and the lenders have so many other programs that they can also show you. So the lender is going to be well versed in the city, the county, the state, um, FHLB. So they're going to, they're going to know about all these different programs so that when you come to them as a client, they're going to pick the best one that they think is going to be beneficial to you. And like Donna said too, they're, they're there to help you obtain the approval. So they're going to look at ways as what, you know, do we need, do we need to wait a couple months and get your credit straight? Do we need to wait a couple months? You know, is it six months? Is it, you know, let's reach a goal so that you are a strong borrower that you're going to move into this house and you're good. Wonderful. Well, Thank you all. You know, Catherine said just a few minutes ago that knowledge is power. And we hope that you are leaving here tonight a little more knowledgeable and a little more empowered uh, to take this next step uh, into home ownership. So uh, we're a little over time, but thank you all for sticking with us. And on behalf of our panelists, Patricia, Donna, Jim, and Catherine, myself, Lisa May, Thank you so much for being with us. I also, of course, cannot leave without thanking Kelly Beard, who kept this event running for us this evening. Kelly, thank you. And any last minute uh, comments from you on this webinar? 
Thank you, Lisa. Um, last minute comments are, as a reminder, we will send this out to all of our registrants along with the slide decks that the panelists showed you tonight. Um, so if you, if we are a registrant, you will be getting that. We will also share this on our YouTube page. Um, if you want to attend our next session or know somebody who does, our next Home Buying Keys webinar is on November 9th from 6.30 to 7.30. We do host these monthly. Um, so please share that with anyone that might benefit from this webinar. And we wish you all the success in your journey. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Goodbye. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.